This is Jason Myers. We're going to send some dogs to the pound this weekend. This is the Marist Football Network. everyone and welcome to another weekly episode of the Maris Football Network pregame show. He's Mike Quinn, I'm Matt Suter, and on the other side of the camera is Amanda Mastro Birdie. This week Rachel Blair sits down with Jason Myers and then Phil Torino earlier in the week was joined in the McCann Center by Vinny Fuschetto and Atik Lucas and then at the end of the show Mike and I wrap it all up with analysis of this week's game against the Butler Bulldogs. This past week the Red Foxes fell to the Campbell Fighting Campbells 35-21 after Maris fell behind 21-0 in the first quarter, and they allowed 285 rushing yards to the Camels. The loss dropped Maris to 2-5 and five overall and 1-3 and three in the PFL. Mike, what went wrong for Maris this week against Campbell? Well, at the very beginning of the game, as you said, they were down 21-0 in the first quarter, and Riley started off having a tough day, so they replaced him with Chucky Looney, but Looney just had too much ground to cover. Even though he did have three successful scoring drives throughout the game, it was just too much of a catch-up game from the beginning for the Red Foxes. Now we're happy, happy to be joined in studio by Jason Myers, who sits down with Rachel Blair. Thanks, Matt. And we're here with Jason. And um, we just want to ask you a couple questions. First of all, fans are wondering out there, what exactly do you do as the kicker during a three-hour practice? How do you fill that time? Well, I go out early because we don't have a lot of the field use on the turf. So go out early before practice, and that's where I get most of my practice in. And then during practice, they kind of move in special teams here and there just to keep us like in practice, because otherwise we would just kick it and go home. So just kind of practice into the net, and then when our time's called for practice, just go out there and uh, work with the team for a little bit. And you work under Coach Kelly, who's been here for 28 seasons. So what can you tell us about working under someone who's been here for so long? Coach Kelly definitely has a lot of experience. He, uh, he's been around for a while, so he knows everything about the game of kicking. So if you ever need a question, he's a great guy to go to about anything from, like, the way, like, how you, if you missed a kick or something, or something that's going to happen in the next game that might happen. So he's a, he's a great, great uh, coach to go to because of experience. And you're from California. You are a big soccer player as well as football player. What made you want to come to Marist and choose football over soccer? My sophomore year, I stopped playing club soccer, which is kind of for high, for college is when you really get recruited. So that's when I made the choice for, for football over soccer, and then. I didn't really have any offers coming out of high school, and then Maris called me kind of late, but when I came and visited, it really uh, it was a great school for me to fit in well here. So, And in the game against Davidson, you hit a 49-yard field goal, which is the longest in Maris history. How did it feel when you were able to accomplish that? Did you know? Well, uh, we don't kick a lot of deep field goals here. It's just Coach P's way, but when I got out there, I just, practiced, just looked like practice, normal kick, so got out there, hit it, and then Felt good after the game. Right after kick, I didn't really think about it too much because I had to do kickoff. But after the game, it felt good. So it's a good, good thing to have on my uh, resume. And last, you've been the main kicker on the team for two years now. What can you tell us about this year's team as compared to years past of how you guys mesh together as a team and your progress so far? I feel like the freshmen that came in this year are uh, they came right into our program pretty good. They uh, it's not like usually you have the freshmen who kind of just stand out like during camp, but during camp they, they meshed in pretty good and our team's been acting together pretty well all season. So. Okay, great. And this is Jason Myers. Now back to you, Matt. That was junior place kicker Jason Myers with Rachel Blair. Earlier in the week, Phil Torino sat down with freshman defensive back Vinny Fuschetto and sophomore running back Atik Lucas at the McCann Center. Let's take a look at that right now. Vinny Fuschetto and Atik Lucas are our guests this week on the Maris Football Network. And guys, thanks so much for taking time out of a busy Tuesday to join us. Vinny, much of the planning we heard heading into the week uh, leading up to the Campbell game was about the option offense that the Fighting Camels run. How do you think they were able to execute that? The quarterback was definitely athletic, two running backs that could run hard. So, I mean, we had a few times where our DNs crashed down on the fullback and the quarterback took it around the outside. But other than that, I'd say we held up pretty well. Not too bad. And Antique, conversely, speaking about your side of the ball in the offense, how do you think the Red Foxes were able to execute? You know, we really started out slow, you know, with those two turnovers and the one that got the interception actually got returned for a touchdown. Um, but after that, we started getting the run game going. 
and I felt that uh, you know we, we really uh, effectively ran the ball against them. And uh, I mean, after Chuck got injured, it like kind of hindered our offense a little bit. But I feel like we were down so much, especially when you let up a few points in the beginning of the game, which is hard to retract those. And we know that this is Tuesday, just the beginning of your week planning for this Butler contest. What do the two of you know about the Bulldogs? I know Butler's a really good passing team. Coach Riley's been telling us they have one of the best quarterbacks in the conference, best quarterback we'll see all year. As soon as they turn, out it's right there. He has the ball right there. Great wide receivers, two six one wide receivers, and that they just pass a lot. We haven't seen a big passing team yet, so they'll definitely be testing our corners, our secondary. I feel like we should have a really big, big day on the ground, especially looking at some of the defensive matchups and things. Uh, you know, I've been looking at a few, you know, a few film against teams that run similar offenses. To Awesome. I think we should have some pretty good success. Week in and week out, Maurer sees a distinct team in the Pioneer Football League. And certainly, we know that the uniform colors are different. But are the schemes and types of game plans that each of these squads try to develop, are they different as well? Size were the same. Both had big line, very athletic kids. But other than the run in the past, it wasn't much different, I don't think. Every team is different, you know, how they the stunts that they do on blitz packages and how they, they run their defense, everyone is different, you know. Especially, you know, dealing with their personnel, they adjust their personnel differently, you know. Some people with bigger safeties might have him come up as a linebacker. Right. Or some teams will just, you know, have their guys pure coverage, you know, just straight safety, you know, in the back. So, I mean, everything is different. It depends, you know. And Vinny, as a freshman that has seen action in six games so far this season at cornerback, I'm sure you've been told by some of your teammates and perhaps coaches that that's unique for a freshman to see so much time. How have you reacted to that? Definitely. Coach Riley, he's a little tough on me since I'm a freshman starting. He, he makes fun of me. He, he like, puts me in my spot. He lets me know that I'm like, do I have to work hard to get in my spot and everything like that. But I love, I love the guys. It's fun to play. We're, right now we're some not, like 12th in the country, I think, at defense, first in the Pioneer League, so we're doing great. But uh, other than that, I, I love it. I'm having a great time. It's fun. I mean, all the guys treat me great. What's the mindset of this unit every week? The mindset is just to go out there and uh, effectively run the ball. You know, we, we're paying attention. Uh, I know Coach makes an emphasis on you know not turning the ball over, as well as you know reaching our goals. You know, we should always set a bar every every game. You know, like 150 yards, a few like maybe 50 yards in the past game. You know, and making sure that we execute our job as running back. You know protecting, you know, as far as blocking goes. You know, we, we really focus and we, we work hard as a group. And I, I think our coach is a great deal of that. You know, he, he really trains us well and we all work hard as a unit. And as the two of you know, the clock is literally ticking for the time that the two of you and the rest of your teammates will have on this year's class of seniors. What sort of mentality or a gist of ideas do you get from them after every contest about how they're feeling? Well, we haven't been doing well, obviously. Two and five, not what we expected. But they, every after every game, you can see like the fear and like how how mad they are on their face mm -hmm. of how we lose, and it it just gets to you when you go to sleep. You just like you want to win for them because you know they're like their time's so short here, and that like football's not you can't play your whole life. You know you know that, and like they only have five more games left. And you want to win them for them so they can go out on top. Yeah, a lot of the seniors, you know, talk to me and uh, explain to me how great of an opportunity it is to play and how short it lasts and to play every down like it's your last because you know the clock is running out even for us as we speak you know after the season we have two more seasons left so you know they really focus on trying to teach us and guide us to become leaders as well as you know like help the guys who are younger especially me being a sophomore to help the guys who are younger and to explain and show them the things that they taught me you know then uh, big I know it's, it's really difficult especially since we're losing to them Mm -hmm. This is like their final season, but I feel like they take every week like it's a championship week just great. because of that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I give them a great deal of respect and, you know, like they're, they're great role models for the younger kids that, come, that are coming up. Vinny Fuschetto, Atik Lucas, great insight from those two of you. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it very much. And best of luck to both of you this weekend and the rest of your contest this season. Thanks. That was Phil Torino with freshman Vinny Fuschetto and sophomore Atik Lucas. Now let's turn to this week's game against the Butler Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are 4-3 overall and 2-2 two and two in the PFL after trouncing Valparaiso 42-14 last Saturday. Mike, looking at this week's contest for Marist, Tommy Riley got the start in last week's game. He was replaced by Chucky Looney, as we mentioned. Looney came in and played very well. What's the quarterback situation looking like for Marist this week? Well, the quarterback situation, I think, was pretty much... 
uh, very simple last week because you had Tommy Riley starting the game with, and he went two for eight with two interceptions. And then Chucky Looney comes in and does a great job going 13 for 20 and three scoring drives. Obviously, there were running touchdowns, but he got his team down the field. So I think they have to go with Looney again this week. The team was very energetic when he was on the field, even though he did suffer an injury. I think pending how his ankle is doing, they're going to have to go with Looney this weekend. Switching from the quarterback game to the Russian game last week, Maris cracked 100 yards on the ground for the second consecutive week. Butler does not have that good of a rush defense. What has to happen for Maris to be successful against Butler on the ground? Well, I think two things. I think the offensive line needs to keep doing a great job like they did last week, getting Calvin McCoy and Atik Lucas down the field. And then also they need to do a good job of handing the ball off to both Atik Lucas and Calvin McCoy, alternating the two running backs. They are two different running backs, but they can still keep the defense on their heels and guessing which running back they're going to go to, which one's going to block, which one's going to get the ball. And also, so it'll keep the defense on their heels if they can get establish the running game and do a good job of confusing the defense. Flipping sides now, Butler enters this week's contest with the third best passing offense in the Pioneer Football League. On the flip side, the Mayor's pass defense is the third best. Mike, who wins this battle and why? Well, I think Maris is going to win this battle because they did not have problems with the passing game last week. They gave up 83 yards passing to Campbell last week, So, and they've seen heavy pass passing offenses before in Jacksonville, which they were very successful against. So I think Maris' defense is going to win this battle uh, with a passing game. Now basically just looking at the bottom line for this week's game against the Butler Bulldogs, what has to happen for Maris to come back to Poughkeepsie with a win? Well, I think they need to pressure the quarterback. They sacked Jacksonville's Josh McGregor twice. They should have no problem getting to Butler's Andrew Huck. They need to get pressure on the quarterback, and they also need to get the momentum going in the first quarter. As we've said throughout the entire show, they were down 21 points in the first quarter. They need to get the ball rolling on offense, but also have big stops on defense just to get the offense the ball and get things going. That does it for us here at the Marist Football Network weekly pregame show. For Rachel Blair, Phil Torino, and Amanda Mastroberti, he's Mike Quinn. I'm Matt Suter. Check us out online at www.maristfootballnetwork.com and follow us on Twitter at MaristFN. Marist travels to Indiana to take on the Butler Bulldogs this Saturday. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m.